Amen. 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 Let's pray in the spirit for a little while here. A little more so so people pray. Pray in the spirit. Amen. Oh, we release the gifts. Thank you, Lord. You have a gift. Don't be ashamed. But you will be uh, tried and measured out. Amen. We're not going to hold anything back. 
God loves you. That's the truth. God's in you. That's the truth. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. He's your confidant. He's your standby. Jesus said, I will not leave you alone, but I'll send the Holy Spirit. He will live in you and show you. Amen. Paraclete. Amen. The same Spirit that lived in, Je lived in Jesus Christ is in you if you're born again. So what's your problem? Could be lack of knowledge. Maybe it's traditional teachings, more than likely. Or you really haven't learned to walk out by faith and believe the integrity of what God's Word has said. Or maybe you're hearing a voice inside you to step out, but you're afraid because you don't see the outcome yet. But when you look into the Bible, you see it's finished. Come on, doers. Amen. I'm encouraging you this morning. Step out in faith. Keep reading here, verse 35. Teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and doing what? Healing every, if I say every, every sickness and what? Every disease among the people. Amen. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Well, let me tell you, it's a privilege to be a shepherd. All of us are laymen. We're all shepherds. You know, there's somebody that you've been hanging around that you're supposed to teach. Don't say that you don't have the ability because you're born again. You have the ability. So take time out and spend time with them. Tell them the truth. But show them through the word first. Show them love and compassion and who you are. Amen? Let's look at our outline here. Is anyone proud of us? You know, the Bible says if everybody, as well as the Bible says, I've heard this, if everybody likes me, something's wrong. Because you're supposed to be different from the, the world, worldly system, the way people think. You know, and I was part of that before I came to Christ, or Christ came inside me. I began to renew my mind, began to show me that I had a new heart, a heart of compassion and mercy and grace for people. Amen? Yeah. That's how you really know when you're born again, when people don't offend you or don't get under your skin. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? Anybody? Don't, don't raise your hand. <laughs> Some of us just walking through that right now. We're believing God to get us through that. But you know, also, we're believing God to move them out of the way. Well, sometimes they're not going to be moved out of the way until you handle that situation that's in your heart. Because the enemy's probably planting them there. At the same time, God said there's going to be some patience going to be involved, some enduring, some strengthening character wise. You've already got the character of God. Amen. But while you're in this world, you will go through some stuff. <laughs> Amen? Now, let's don't blame God. Now, the first thing we always want to do is blame God because we're going through something. Well, God is a good father. Amen? 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 Have you been proud of someone lately? Your family, your friend? How many here are proud of your church family? Amen? Amen. See, if you're proud of it, well, that word proud, you know, we kind of word proud. I'll tell you what, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you getting up in the morning, getting yourself together, bringing your family. Proud of you making an effort to even come. There's some that don't even make the effort because they're just tired of churchy, church, church. And I hope that you see this isn't churchy, church, church. This is the place to come be taught. You know? And I can tell you, rewards will be much greater than you ever thought if you'll just come with ears to hear. Amen. Come with ears to hear. Now, it doesn't mean everything's going to be said that you like or you might find some fault. Okay? But don't come with an attitude of a darkened eye like that. Come with expectation. Knowing that, you know what, I'm going to a church where the Holy Spirit teaches the word, teaches the truth, and they walk by love. And somebody said hi to me this morning. Did, did anybody not? No. Somebody here didn't get a hug or a hi or a handshake? Raise your hand. I'm going to come down there personally. Who didn't get a hug? And then I'll tell you what. Personally. Good morning, sister. What's your name? Betty. Betty. Betty, don't have to again. Amen. All right, everybody say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's family, isn't it? No, say it like you mean. We're sorry. <laughs> Amen. We're talking about anybody proud of us this morning. That first thought there, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. You know, Paul, the great man of God, Paul, but no greater than you or me. Still a son. Join heir. Go on. Paul was going about teaching the churches. And in Thessalonians, this church of Thessalonians, they had risen up in the midst of, of, of the Roman Empire. Imagine being where people don't like you. Woo! And there they were, right in 
the center point of this. And, and Paul had taught them the ways of God to begin to, to get a little bit. They were kind of newborn Christians. And he was writing them letters and telling them how proud he was of them. They were struggling, but also there was some false teaching going about that they had missed the rapture. And so they thought all the things they were going through was for the glory of God through these trials and tribulations and all this pressure that they were standing in the ground. But that was a lie. They didn't miss it. But Paul was encouraging them anyway to stay strong, to keep that fight. Remember what I'm talking about? You're going through something right now and you believe that you might have missed God? You didn't miss Him. Stay with it. God's no respect of a person, but He loves you so much. And you know, it's always through the grace and the mercy and compassion of God. If you notice, most of the time in your epistles, especially, it opens up with the letter, grace and peace be unto you. No, the Lord has a way of writing us a love letter that just stirs you up right off. It's like, good morning, I love you. Yeah, well, Lord, you don't know what I did last night. Yeah, I do. You know, I was there. You know, I even know what your prayers are before you even ask me. Well, oh, is that somebody who knows you? God doesn't find fault or judgment. He, Jesus already took all that to the cross. But do you know that? You see? American churches don't teach all that. They just want to teach you just to wait. Wait to get your healing when you get to heaven. Wait to get your money when you get to heaven. Wait to get peace when you get to heaven. But you know what? I want it now. God promised it is now. Because faith is now. Not when you get to heaven. Amen? What a glorious day that will be. Well, the glory is now. It's in me. You know, I hope I'm expressing that to you this morning. I hope as you look about other Christians when you walk that you see a smile on their face. But you know what? They know something. They're excited about what's going on right now. Not for such of the people who don't know, but because they know that they've got a witness inside them that wants to tell people, you know what, Lord, you give me an opportunity, I'm going to tell somebody about you. I'm going to show them how much you love me. I'm not going to downgrade them. I'm not going to talk about them. I'm not even going to talk about other ministries. I'm just going to talk about how good you are and how you saved me and brought me back into union with you. So that's love that compels you to tell people that. It's easy to find fault. A little harder to walk by faith, though, isn't it? But all things are possible for those who believe. When Paul was writing this letter. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Yeah, this church was being persecuted. They were being laughed at. Well, you go to Emmanuel. <laughs> I read on that sign right there. And I had a person tell me the other day, yeah, uh, they wanted to send them over here to come to the healing services we've been having. They said, oh, I'm not going to the healing services. They make you feel all like it's always your fault. You don't have enough faith. It's because of your unbelief. That's why you're not getting healed. That's not what my Bible says. Hallelujah. It's because of the ignorance. Or maybe we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us because we've been rejected, maybe through church. Or maybe somebody told us this. But God told me different. Jesus bore it all on the cross. He shed none of his blood. Amen. Who's reportedly going to believe? See, I said we're learning. Now, Paul was going through all this. Constantly, they were bringing all these stage points. I thought I taught you better than that. But you know, you ever been around somebody you, you spend some time with, you teach them some things, and then when you leave them for a, a season, they kind of get wary, they kind of go out there and start searching around. Next thing you know, you talk to them again, they talk like they don't even know anything anymore. And you spend all that hard time praying for them, crying out for them, blessing them, giving them your last dollar. But you know what? Faith says, I'm going to go again with you. I'm going to love on you even more. Amen? Amen? That's what grace does. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. So that we ourselves glory, this is Paul talking to the uh, Thessalonian church, we glory in or about you in the churches of God for your patience. Now when you think of the word patience, what do you think about? Yeah. And faith. And what do you think about when you hear the word faith? In all your persecutions. What do you think about when you're being persecuted? And tribulations. What do you think about when you're tribulating, when you're going through something <clears throat> that you endure? See, there it is. Paul leaves the last for the best. You're enduring. Amen? Paul said he had proud of this body of believers. We ourselves glory in. That word glory in the Greek means to brag about, to boast about. God's, God's boasting about us right now. 
our Father is lifting. He, he loves to see His children get blessed. Amen. And the truth is, the blessing is already yours. Right? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means in heaven and on earth. To brag about, to boast about, to give praise about, to speak good words. Let's look at John chapter 10. It said we're going to walk the word this morning. Let the Holy Spirit say, I come in the name of Jesus with a reachable, teachable spirit. Holy Spirit, teach me. Amen. Holy Spirit is the teacher. What did I say? The book of John, chapter 10. It's verse 27. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Didn't Jesus tell his disciples, follow me, and I will make... You see, I'll make you fishers of men, but I'll make, no, I'll do some making in you as you follow me. Now, what am I following? I'm following the love master. I'm following the one who, who knows me better than I know myself. The old me has been buried now. Now God put a new me, Christ in me. Now I'm learning how to walk in this thing. And of course, when you begin to step out in faith and begin to practice the word, the enemy comes in like a rushing bull to try to what? To knock us down? That too will try to steal the word that's been planted in your heart. You see, there's a difference between sense knowledge and revelation knowledge, heart knowledge and mind knowledge. But we're all walking through that, so don't give up. Keep attaining the information. We've got enough here. There's enough knowledge right in here. We shouldn't be in here. All right? And that's what, you know, the Bible talks about, that we reject the knowledge of God. Because we're still walking as Americans. But the devil's deceiving us, telling us that's who we are, and that's not who you are when you're born again. That old man, that old nature has been put on the cross. Now you're a new man in Christ, a son of God, a kingdom-minded, spiritual-minded son. You think about the things of the kingdom. See, that's when you're under pressure. We're going to find out what comes out of us. You know, I was reading a can of hairspray the other day. It said, under pressure, look out. Come on, what happened when you're under pressure? We end up saying things or doing things we regret later, and the devil goes, gotcha. But we're smarter than that. We get back in the race, right? It's covered in the blood, repent, and Father, I'm coming underneath the throne room of grace. I'm coming into your presence, Father, because you've given me a legal ground to come in through the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just come in as a son. My sheep hear my voice and know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. When you got born again, you got eternal life. Not when you get to heaven. See, eternal life is something you can't earn. Uh-oh. You can't earn this. You can't work hard enough for it. If that was the case, then Jesus would never come and die on the cross. We could have earned that. All right? I give you eternal, give them eternal life that they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Now, Paul was teaching this type of stuff. You know, when somebody starts talking about it like that, you look at somebody who's teaching it, you see their testimony, you see their faith, you see their walk, you see their boldness. They've been through something. They know something. And they're still talking about it? Boy, if that doesn't give you faith. So Paul was encouraging because he had seen, he had been, he'd been in some places. If anybody had walked some places he had, here he was teaching how God had delivered him through everyone. And now he was filled with the Spirit. So he talked to him on both levels. You see, that's what we do. You talk to people on both levels. You meet them where they're at. Jesus did. We don't have to be so high and proud and mighty because we know things. Let's just meet people where they're at. We don't have to beat them up with the word. Let's just grace lick them, I'll call them. <laughs> Let's give them a little bit of leeway, you know. But don't be anxious. God's not in no hurry. That's right. But all must be saved. Right? Leave some room for others to come behind you if you don't close the deal. Amen? That was for somebody. Because that was for me. I, man, I was like a 
Who was I talking to this morning? I was like a lion on a, on a, shoot, on a kite string. He couldn't hold me back. I was telling everybody about Jesus. I mean, I don't care. Beat them all up before you even get them in the boat. Full of zeal, no wisdom. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But I couldn't help it. It was like fire in my bones until I began to learn through the patience of the teaching of the Holy Spirit, showing me how to reign as a king, a son. Amen? That's who you are. <clears throat> my Father who has given him to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch him out of my Father's hand. That sounds like security to me. But you need some reinforcement. <clears throat> how do I know that I know that I know that I am born again? How do you know? I mean, I could lead you to a churchy, churchy prayer, you know. If you don't know, Brother Jesus died tonight, and you don't know you're going to heaven, pray this little prayer with me, and God will take you to heaven. I'll take that one. How do you know? See, Paul was doing that. He was reinforcing it through the teaching, but coming back to them, always encouraging them, building them up in the most holy faith. Amen? He was proud of them, even though they were struggling in certain areas. Right in the midst of all of this, they were they were suffering persecution because of their faith. Even though they were missing some areas, come on now, they were still standing. They wasn't giving the glory to the devil because what he was doing, they was keeping their eyes fixed. Amen. Let's go back to your outline there. Oh. Better be there. Paul said, He's proud of his body believers. We ourselves glory in you, to brag about you, boast about you, give you praise, and speak good words. You know, experiencing God's grace, all of us have been saved if you've accepted that grace. Let's look at that. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. We're talking about, Is anybody proud of us? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. You know, it's through the grace of God that you've been saved, all of us. <clears throat> Excuse me. For by grace, you've been saved. That's what my Bible says. Through faith, and not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, as anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, Works which God had prepared, prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. For by grace, now grace means the unmerited favor of God, but also another definition is that God actually picks you up and displays you to the world. Put you on your shoulder and say, That's my daughter, that's my son. Well, Lord, I'm not worthy. Don't ever say that. I'm not good enough. Don't ever say that because you can't earn this. You see? So he picks you up, like Paul was picking up this body over at Thessalonians, saying, look, 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 enemy. You know, we are a bunch of body of believers. We, we, are, the, we are a force to reckon with. All power and authority has been given to you. Amen. Living inside you. You haven't missed it. Alright? Get over that guilt. Get over that shame. That's just a lying spirit trying to tell you that. You know what I tell the devil when he tries to tell me stuff like that? I say, devil, why are you telling me that if I'm not really what I am in Christ? Why are you trying to tell me that? Because you know who I am. And I know who I am. And I know who Jesus is. I know who my Father is. Amen. The devil says, whoop, I'm getting out of here. Because he knows who he believes and is in him. This is the place to get to. Right? The truth is, it's already implanted in you. God planted that seed. Christ is in you. Amen? You can glory in this. You can manifest this. All it takes is a little bit of faith. You can just know a couple of scriptures. Start sleeping with it. Eating on it. Meditating. Speaking. Hearing. The well, next thing you know, it'll give you courage, even in the midst of trials and tribulation. But you got to keep pressing in. Amen? Why was Paul proud of them? Well, if you look at our our, our head scripture there. We are so glory about you in the churches of God for your patience. Now patience in the Greek means a picture of one who is under a heavy burden but refuses to bend, break, or surrender because they are convinced that the territory, the promise of God or the principle under the assault rightfully belongs to them. 
with a mouthful of what? You see, I can be patient during times of trial because I know, and I know we've all been through something. Believe it or not, nobody's testimony is better than others because you weren't there in my night of struggle. You weren't there that night when I thought I was going to lose it. So my fall might not have been as far as you think it's been. You thought you might have fallen further than I did, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus came to my rescue. And he encouraged me. He didn't discourage me. He didn't find fault. He was sent to pay the price on the cross and gave me back the keys of the kingdom like it was in the beginning. Now I've got to get some knowledge and some understanding and press into these things. But you know, it's a great day. The kingdom of heaven, I hear right now, the kingdom of heaven is a bell shaking. Woo! School's in! Amen? School's in if you come. Hallelujah. Build you up. Courage in the faith. The most holy faith. Church Thessalonians wasn't trying to get out from underneath their problems. You see, we all we have a tendency when, when the pressure's on, we want to hurry up and get out. And so we'll do things, we'll religious things, a tradition, or we'll, we'll try to go make things happen. You know what I found out? Once I'm in it, I'm in it. Then I, try, then I try to go reading and try to do all this supernatural praying and fasting and do all these things. And it just turned out to be the flesh. And the whole time, you know, I'm already in it. I should have known this. Uh, the Bible says that you've fallen. You've fallen. But we like to blame it on God for falling or blame the devil for really falling. So now that I'm in it, there's something's going to happen. Patience is going to have to be a worker that goes to work for me. Puts on a hard hat, puts a tool belt on. Goes to work. Because if I just lay around and feel sorry for myself, stay home and cover my head up, the enemy will beat the heck out of you. And then finally you get to your senses and say, you know what, well, I'm going to work because work is patience. And when patience goes to work, faith begins to be activated. Because you know, like this church knew, this body of believers knew. They didn't give up. They thought they missed it. They didn't miss it. They were right back in the race. Stay in the race. Amen? God never said it was going to be easy, did he? Right. Amen? Patience. Look at letter A there in Roman number, number two. Why was Paul proud of that? Patience means it's a spirit of endurance. That's what you have, a spirit of endurance, a refusal to give up. You know, what? most of the time when we're underneath pressure, we give up on our responsibilities. You know, it's easy to be a Christian when everything's going good. Come on. But then, you know, you're responsible also. Now, the one thing I've learned to be responsible for is the way I'm supposed to think. I have a right to think. I have a right to control my mind. I don't have a right to be offended. I don't have a right to be hurt or judged. Because that's not... I don't even have a right to seek love from someone else because I'm here to love others. You see? As you begin to learn that, more pressure becomes applied, but really it's burning, it's burning the character. That old flesh is coming out and the character of Christ is coming forward. Hallelujah. More of Jesus, less of me. Amen. Amen. And that's all of us. You know, we all go through the fire. So that flesh loves to burn, baby. It loves to scream. What about me? What about me? What about my rights? Come on. That's the church. Nobody here. And God's going, yeah, what about that? What about Christ in you? The hope and the glory. I mean, that's what it says what it's all about anyway. Transformation, a renewing of the mind, new person in Christ, a new man, risen from the dead, the way we used to think about things, the way we used to act, the way we used to react. And Paul was encouraging his church, don't you give up. Stay with the teaching. Stay with the word. Stay with the truth. Stay in love. Be a quick forgiver. All you don't know what they've done. Yeah, I do. Forgive them anyway. Because you're not of that anymore. You've been sent from the kingdom of God. You represent the kingdom of God now. You're an ambassador. I'm give you a lot of information, but you can handle it. 
Amen. Don't believe in everything you see on devil vision. Amen. So what is coming to the end? The main thing is be secure in who you are in Christ that you might be able to help someone else before they make it to the pit. So it's all about others. Amen. On the way, God's going to provide your needs, give you more than you could ever ask or hope or pray for. We have all the wealth of the nations, what others toil for is coming across right now, church. What are you going to do with it? You say, I'll help them if I get enough. Well, if we're not helping with a little bit we've got now, what are we going to do when we get enough and end up blowing it? I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about even revelation knowledge. We all want to have a deeper revelation and understanding. Let's look at letter B there. The church of Thessalonians was surrounded by non-believers who were persecuting them, their faith daily. You see, you see what happened here now? They're being persecuted because of the word. <clears throat> faith. You know, faith. God and His Word. You see, if you don't always hear the voice of God, you have God's words, which are His Faith speaking words. He spoke these by faith. He's a faith being. Amen. So are you. You walk by faith. Amen. The just are justified by faith. You know, that word faith sounds, it's just kind of thrown out there nonchalant, you know, nowadays. But faith is, to me, is, is the word trust. Are we trusting Jesus to really be our Lord? The Lord is one who takes care of the territory, takes care of his dominion. And Jesus is the king of kings. He, he, he has kingship. He, he's over all, not just the world, but the universe. The Father giving him all authority and power. He sits alone on that throne. But we sit with him in Christ. That's great, isn't it? But he's given us the keys of the kingdom. And he said, now go in my name and inhabit and take control of this earth. Wow. What well, responsibility? Amen. All things are possible. Those who believe. So you're taking territory every time you step out in faith, trusting God and His Word. And don't make the Word where it's, it's not a boy, a boy. Make the Word where it's God's Word speaking the truth to you. His Daddy speaking to you. Don't get churchy churchy with it. I don't like that word. No word called the church, right? Let's keep going here. Even though they were surrounded by non-believers, they weren't surprised what was going on. I mean, here, you shouldn't be surprised what's going on around you right now. Unless you're a newborn believer. And, you know, to you, I mean, like, what the heck is going on? I gave my life to Jesus, and all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> right? Oh, gee, I thought you loved me. And God's got a way of pouring His grace on you at the beginning. And just like you just know that you know that He's there. I mean, if you stepped out in front of an 18 wheel, He pulls you back just in time. That's how much mercy and grace He pours upon you. And He's really the same all the time. But we begin to get some knowledge. We begin to get proud. The next thing you know, we just take things for granted. And we just think, oh, we're just a little bit disobedience. God understands. God's not a hard taskmaster. You don't want to sin. <laughs> you don't want to sin anymore. You want to be transparent. You want to walk about like you know who you believe and you're persuaded that whatever God said is the truth and you're going to walk in it regardless of persecution because you're speaking the word, doing the word, and you're a word-minded person, spiritual-minded. You're laying hands on sick people, raising the dead, casting out demons, just a daily routine in the kingdom of God. Right? Should be. And here was the church of Thessalonica. They were probably doing a little bit of that. And it was all standing and all. God said, you didn't miss it. Keep going. Keep going. And I was asking the Lord about a lot of things that's happening around the body of Christ, around the church, around everybody here. And I said, Lord, what's this? Just keep doing what you're doing, son. Preach my word. In season, out of season. It's the word that's sharper than a two-way sword because it's I hope that you hear it. It's not a voice of, of condemnation. It's a voice of anticipation for you. Get on board with this stuff. It'll change your life. You keep coming here. In a year's time, you'll be a super spiritual giant. Whose well, word, true. He who has a son, right? he who keeps my word, whose word of Jesus, fall in love. 
to Jesus. This is Jesus. He's the, he's the head. Right? We're in the body. Amen. Let's keep going here. Number two, we're talking about why Paul was proud there in faith. In the Greek, faith means a force that is forward, directed and aggressive, never backward, reaching, but always pressing forward to obtain or achieve a specific target or goal. What's your motive? What's your agenda right now? Check yourself out. What are you pressing into right now? If you get your healing, which you will, then what are you going to do? If you get set free from some addiction, then what are you going to do? You see? And your faith will bring you out into the light. You see, darkness is what inhabits those of, of doing sin. The Bible says that darkness has no place in the kingdom of light. Now, wait a minute. How, well, darkness comes to the soul, your mind, will, and emotions, your body. You can't touch the spirit if you're born again. Who you really are. You have to discern that. You know, even Paul was telling, look, who told, they said, who told you that the rapture had already come? Who told you that you have to be sick? Who told you you had to lack? Who told you you had to be uh, worried and afraid of the future? God never told you that. Who told you that? So you have to discern also the, the powers of darkness. You've got to know your enemy too. Amen? But don't give him too much time because he's defeated. That's all you need to know. Jesus defeated him on that cross through the blood. Come on. Resurrected. Bible says that he stripped him of all his armor, spoiled his plans. Amen. Amen. Let's keep going. Letter A there, number two at the bottom. Faith translation. Like an arrow that is shot, it cannot be taken back until it hits its target. That's a good translation. When's the last time you shot your arrow of faith? Amen. How many of you got your faith out? I mean, all the way out. You know what I mean? Like you're naked, standing out there, walking by faith. Woo! Nobody like you naked. I hate to do that to you when there's nothing else left. Amen? And you have no ways in the hole, nobody else to rely on, with Jesus and his promises. Seems like faith kicks in, doesn't it? But we're in this time of patience. But let patience have its perfect work, knowing, that's what the Bible says in the book of James, I'm going to be too far ahead of myself here. It's another thought here, we go back to uh, the main scripture, 2 Thessalonians 1, 3, so that we ourselves glory and value you in the churches of God with patience and faith in all your persecution. Now down at the bottom, number three, persecution in Greek means to pursue, to follow, to aggressively, to seek after, you look on the other side, like a hunter pursuing his prey to capture or to kill it like an animal. Are you pursuing the answer? Are you pursuing what God has said about it in his promises? Like a hunter. Not pursuing to hurry up and get out of that thing because there's pressure going on and there's persecution. But God said, I'm so proud of you. Because you're standing. Let's put it this way. I'm standing in you. God's standing in you. Living in you. Breathing in you. The glory is in you. Manifestations in you. All that you need is inside of you. Born again. Amen. Number four there. <clears throat> says tribulation. Now, I notice that tribulation doesn't refer to sickness. Now, if you're sick, you could be going through some tribulation. Now, what does the word tribulation mean? When I say, it's a heavy pressure situation. You see, they were born again, but they were going through tribulation. I think both, they thought they missed the tribulation, but at the same time, they were going through the tribulation. John 16, 33. Let's turn there, please. John 16, 33. Oh, you all quiet this morning. You must be attaining some understanding. Amen? 
Everybody, everybody already knew this? That's good. There'll be a test when you get to heaven, okay? Now the test is already done. Let's say John 16, 33. These things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. Now you notice Jesus talked about you having peace first. See, that's the key. During the times of patience and tribulation, if you know the Prince of Peace, that tribulation shouldn't affect you as much. Because you have a relationship with the Father. You know, you're growing into this. And let me tell you, the enemy keeps putting more obstacles in your sight to try to steal your peace. See, if he can steal our peace, then we're in confusion. We're not thinking right. We're not making the right decisions. We begin to get a little bit blurry eyed in our focus. But, you know, it, 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 does Jesus love me? Or is he mad at me? Or am I a sinner? Or am I really saved by grace? Is my position secure, secure in Christ? Or am I walking by my condition? What's going on around me? See, you're in and out. Back and forth, back and forth. The devil goes, I love those type of Christians. But you don't have to be like that. The Bible says a double-minded man. That's not who you are. Amen. You're single-eyed, single-minded. Got your eyes fixed on Jesus and who's in you and you're in him, you're one. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Tribulation. Letter A there, I need number four. Like one tied with a rope, laying him on his back and placing a heavy rock, a boulder, on top of him until the body is crushed. Boy, anybody been there? Ugh. I can't even breathe. I'm going to my sister's trouble. And then what do we do? We add more boldness to it. Man, guess what I'm going through? <laughs> Nobody knows. The devil's been whipping me all week. And then they go, well, that ain't nothing. Guess what he's doing to me? And they'll go, oh, my God, good cry. It's my party, and I cry if I want to. <laughs> right? The devil loves that. Works of the flesh, not knowing. It's tempting, tempting, tempting to get you off. You know, that's, that's the deceiver. That's not who you are. That's the old nature. You're a new man in Christ, born again. The Bible says actually born from above. Amen. You know, I found out that God knew me before I got here. He knew me and knew the plans he had for me before he even put me in my mother's womb. Wow. Think about that. And he knew he was going to send his son to take care of the sin issue. The sickness issue. The money issue. He knew all that. That's why Jesus did it. Because he loved it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten soul. Whoever shall believe in him shall not be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the cross. I'm not ashamed of the blood. I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus. I'm certainly not ashamed of his word. I'm not ashamed of the love relationship and his grace. If he wants to keep grace in me, he can do all he wants. Amen? That's love. Love died on that cross. Love raised from the dead. Love heals you and delivered you and set you free long ago. Amen? Let's look at Romans uh, 8.35. Talk about tribulation. A heavy pressure situation. You see, if anybody was under pressure, look at this church of Thessalonians right in the midst of a Roman Empire. Man, you know, the Romans wanted to kill Christians and throw them to the lions. And they're right in the heart of all that. But you know what? They were bold as a lion. Romans 8, what is it, 8.35? shall separate me from the love of Christ. Now, you know I made this personal. This is a love letter to only me. It's not to you, it's just to me. Daddy just sent me a letter. Okay? No, you make it personal. Don't get all religious attitude. No, it's a love letter. Right? Who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, now what's tribulation? Pressure. 
right? So we talked about, with your outline there, a very heavy, heavily pressured situation. You have a situation. Or distress. Distress means being you're crowded. So you're under pressure and you're being crowded. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ooh. But why are you going through this? Is God doing this to us to teach us something? Absolutely not. The Bible says all scripture is inspired by God to teach, correcting, admonishing, building up. So if you're not going to go through the word, even the written word of God's word in his finger, right now, then you're going to miss some things. You are. Not God. God said it's done. He already did everything Jesus already spoken. It's done. Amen. You got the mind of Christ. You can get some more information, understanding. Apply it daily. Holy Spirit will bring it to life. A revelation. Separate me from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation, shall distress, persecution. Why were they being persecuted? For the word say. For Jesus. Or famine, or nakedness, or peril. Peril means danger. Are you at a place right now of pressure where there's danger? You might think you are. You might think you are. Who are you going to believe? God? Or your circumstances? Sword? For it is written, for your sake be killed all day long. You have counted as sheep for the slaughter? Yeah! Yeah! Who's the guy who wrote this? Yeah! He must have been through something. Yeah, and what? All these things. You notice that he said things. Most of the things of the world, the worries and the cares and the things of the world, a lot of times we allow it to pressure us because we're not receiving what we need right now. Or we might think that God promised it and we're not getting it. And so now we're mad at God. Or you go the other way, the devil must be doing it because I'm standing strong in the Lord. Now that could be it too. Most of the time the enemy wants to try to steal it. Right? He's called the thief. Again, if he can steal your peace, he's got you. See, you need peace during times of pressure. And that church was standing. Paul was proud of them, right? He was proud because they were standing in that peace. Can you imagine if you're still here and everybody else disappears? Hmm. And that's what they thought. Of course, everybody didn't disappear, but they'd heard on the grapevine that Jesus already came. Yet in all that, more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror is through him that loved us, for I am persuaded. When you think of the word persuaded, what do you think about? What's the definition? Persuaded. Convinced. convinced. I am convinced. You know what? I am convinced. What convinced me? God's love letter. The, the oracles of the government of Jesus Christ. See, there are spiritual laws that, that do apply. If God not a man shall lie, so that God should repent. If God said it, therefore shall it be made good. Right? So trust, trust what God says. Trust the voice of the Holy Spirit. And step out. So, Pastor, what if I don't get it? What if you do? What if they laugh at me? What if they don't? What if they don't want to be around me? Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be different anyway. Right? Not just different because you, you know you wear your hair different or you got earrings in your nose. We're talking about that. You don't have to be if that's what God calls you to be, hallelujah. More people will get saved if you're bold with it. Let's keep reading here. For I am persuaded, verse 38, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor heights, or deaths, or any other created thing shall be able to separate by say me. Me. You see, you're me. Separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now here comes verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 1. I tell you the truth. In Christ, also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. See, I asked you earlier, how do you know what you say? There's a witness inside you. There's a witness. Spirit of God. Spirit of truth. 
You know, even in the midst of your, your faults, whatever that might be, you don't dwell there. You come right into the truth and say, Father, I'm still a son or a daughter. Amen. Don't beat yourself up with it. Get out of that playground. Repent. Get back in place. Get into your team authority. If you've got to put on the robe, again, look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm putting on my armor. Again. Truth is, the armor was never taken off. Amen. The devil's lying to you. Let's look at the look on the left hand side of your, your uh, scriptures there, Romans 8 28. 8 28. And I know, if I say I know, I know. The word know means you know something. I'm in here to know. I mean, know you're born again. So don't you raise your hand twice. Why would the devil talk us out of that? Salvation. And salvation means everything. Soul zone means prosperity. Your whole being being taken care of. Everything you need is in there. Everything. God didn't leave anything out. And I know that all things work together for the good. Now this is where it gets funny, isn't it? Because the church loves to teach, well, brother, that sickness, that thing you've got going, that poverty, that, that hurting, that broken heart, that anger, all those things are going to work out for the good. That's not true. That's not true, is it? Amen. They didn't finish the scripture. Hallelujah. Works out for the good for what? For those who love God. Do you realize how much Father loves us? Talk about earlier, His grace is just to pick you up and show you off. Even with your sniffling nose and crying and hair all bad day and come on, makeup all over the place and didn't want to get up and couldn't find your socks or the ones you wanted to wear. Come on. But God loves you still. Loves you that much. Bless him. Bless him even in the midst of not knowing. God loves those who are what? Called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Now that word predestined, a lot of people take that out of context. Predestined doesn't mean we know that you've been called. We know that you've been chosen. You know, we're predestined for a certain uh, calling, maybe. But that don't mean that you've been predestined. You find yourself in prison because you did something stupid. And now you're called saying God predestined you to go to prison? Or God predestined you to have cancer? No. That's not true. You're predestined to walk in love. You're predestined to build the character, show the character, the love of God. You're predestined to show people Jesus. Amen. That's who you're predestined to be. You're not predestined to be sick, busted, and disgusted. So God can show His glory? No. His glory is in you. Amen. Amen. You're the manifestation of His glory in this temple. When you get home today, take a look at yourself in the mirror. Don't look at this bodysuit. It's just a uniform. You take it away, you got the Spirit of Christ. You're full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Don't they keep you on this earth, this shell of sin? That's why it's going to be taken off. That's why it goes back to the dirt. Back to the dust. Amen? The absent from the body is where? The presence of the Lord. There's no in between. So why are we fighting this thing in between of who we believe? You don't have to go that way. For destined to be well, conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Verse 30, Romans 8, verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, those he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. Whom he justified means he also glorified. I notice that there's a word also going on in here. Also, also, also. And, and that God also, I'm going to give you more. I'm also, do the best thing ever happened to me, God's saying to you. Wow. Paul was proud of him. Verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be in me, who can be against me? Right? God dwells in man. In the Old Testament, he didn't do that. He didn't just come upon man. Amen? Let's go back to your outline. Well, before we go there, I want to talk about one more thing here. Since we're... Is there anything that can separate you from the love of God? Come on, we already read that, right? Romans 5, 8. Let's go 5, 1. Romans 5, 1. 
See, we're teaching this morning. The Holy Spirit's teaching us. I hope you're writing some of this stuff down. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have what? Peace. We talked about that earlier. Why are you going through this thing you're going through? You need peace. And peace, peace at what? Surpasses all understanding according to the book of Philippians. See, sometimes we don't understand how we can get through the night when we've been through so much during the day. Sometimes you're thinking, hey, I can't go on. And then you find yourself the next morning you're going on. Where'd that come from? Don't give up. You know, the fight that you fight is a fight of faith. And trusting God at His Word and the promises. But also, you've got to know who's in you. I'll put it this way, who you're in. Right? You know, you're all along the Holy Ghost. Amen? And verse uh, 5, 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Now, you see, grace gives you, gives you a legal right to stand because you're standing in that, that grace. It's, it's favor of God. It's the mercy of God. It's the compassion of God. It's the willingness of God to show himself strong in you. Just to the outside world saying, there ain't no way you're going to make it. Or we know what you've been doing. And you call yourself a Christian? You stand. Get things right now. Clean up that house. Get your house in order. Who's that? Who feel was telling me to get his house in order? I wonder if he was confessing his sins. Just kidding. But with that, you got to do some cleaning. Come on now. Up here. Starts up here. And then it works right here. Then all of a sudden, it pushes that light, that love of God's word, pushes all that darkness out. That stinking thinking. Which we stand, verse 3, not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Ooh, hallelujah, I'm going through something! Come on, Aubrey. Get up and do two steps. Or whatever it is, the jig or something. But we're going through something. You ain't going through something, you're not going through the kingdom. And if you think it's just going to be easy to pull off the side of the road when you get what you ask for, guess what? The enemy tries to come in and steal even other things that you thought you had. But we don't look at that, we just keep going on. Why? Because we know. The enemy tries to come around my house and say, just for that, we're going to lay hands on some bleeding, we're going to cast out some demons. Somebody's going to get saved today. If he keeps it up, I'm going to say, look, yeah, call down my big brother. You know your rear end's already been kicked. You want to kick again? Or you, you know God tells you to do it, son. Amen. You know the Bible says when the devil resist, when you resist the devil, that word resist means he runs for his life. Amen. He's on the run right now because you're going to be standing the rest of this week. You're not going to let the enemy have his way in your life anymore. Amen. You hear me? Do you hear me? And all those little deer hears, and there is us. You know, amen. Verse 3, and not only that, also glory and tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces something. What does tribulation? Pressure. And we don't want the pressure. You know, I don't live for pressure. Don't, don't get me wrong. I don't go looking for trouble. You ever pray for peace and all of a sudden you got trouble? Everybody, I pray for peace, not, not trouble, Lord. But because you were standing on, on God's word, you're probably speaking something. You're probably praying for somebody, standing in the gap for somebody. You're probably being a doer. Yeah. You see, here they were, being a doer in the church best all day, and yet they were being pressured to give up. Don't give it up. Don't give the devil nothing. You don't owe him anything. Verse 4, oh, that's all right. Produces perseverance. Now, perseverance is what? Patience. We got enough time. Let's go to the book of James. I just, I get accused because I love the word. But how many are word people? How many eat the word and drink the word? Taste and see how good the word is. That's what we do here. If you, if you come here, that's what you're going to hear. I encourage you, keep coming. Amen? Keep coming. 
James chapter, uh, look at verse 2. Chapter 1, verse 2. A brother, count all joy when you fall into what? Various trials. Or King James says, divers, temptations. Trials, again, are like pressure and burdens. Are you being, are you carrying a burden? Count all joy. Put a smile on your face. Don't you dare wash your face and act like you're fasting. And, uh, go to church today. Let, let people wear that. You know, you can always tell somebody's going through something, can't you? Got their head down. Eagle, is that my name? Got their head down. Worshiping the devil. Keep your head high. Keep your eyes focused on the things that are above, God says. Look to Jesus. You know, he's the author and finisher. It's already been done. I think I'll walk with him. But give the devil your hand. Get out of sin. Stop thinking about it. Just be a doer of who you are now. A son. A daughter of God. Right? Know your legal rights. When you fall through various trials, verse 3, James chapter 1, verse knowing. That word knowing, I've talked about this before in case it's the first time you've been here. That word knowing actually means like intimate knowing. Like you know your husband or as you know your wife, intimately. So in other words, you know everything about it. And God's been so graceful in, in giving us His Word, His promises. Really, you have the mind of Christ, you should know everything by now. Remember, Jesus got on the disciples. Now, they weren't born again at that time, but He said, guys, you've been around me. You've seen the miracles. You've seen me raise the dead. You've seen me walk on water. You've seen me calm the storm. You've seen me feed 5,000 people, and you still don't believe me? Mostly, you know, getting on a little bit. And then after the day of Acts, you know, they all have Christ in them. Praise God. But the power in you, the Holy Ghost power, to be a witness to that. The witness is inside you. Your heart. God gave you a new heart. Not an old stony heart. <clears throat> Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Now, when you're under pressure... Or you're going through some type of tribulation, something's going to happen. It's how you react to it. Most time we find out where we really are in our Christian walk during that time. That's not a place of failure. It's not a spiritual weakness as much as it is. You know what, Lord? I'm standing. You know, some people use that old scripture. Oh, they slay me. What if you do get slayed? How do you get hurt a Right? Never know that. Always worry about that. I mean, if you really know that. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect word. Now, when you are enduring through patience, patience is a worker. I, I, I was at the hospital all this week. And the lady was telling me, you know, she's standing by faith for her husband. He's going through a serious situation, okay? And they're standing because they know who they are in Christ. They know, they know the power of God's Word. They know all that. But she said something to me that struck me because this, this lesson was already in, in me. And she said, you know what, even though we're waiting, we got it already, and we know the manifestation is there, she said, I'm keeping busy. She was keeping busy. She wasn't just laying aside. She, she wasn't just being patient. You know, a, a, a person, when you wait, like a waiter is a person who's not just patient, but he is also looking, waiting for something to happen, working all the time. He's there. A good waiter. He's patient. He's patiently waiting. And patience is a worker. He goes to work when what's happening, your faith is being tested. God doesn't test your faith. God is all-knowing. Is he or is he not? Yes. Well, it is. We don't know a lot of stuff. And in part, we grow. Glory to glory. Come on. From faith to faith, right? 
Those who seek God, those who seek Him, what He gives to. Those who have no interest in seeking Him, even if you think you're going to get it, you're not. If you're not going to seek Him. Why did God say seek Him? Amen? Knowing that testament of faith produces patience, but let patience, in other words, endurance, have its perfect work that you'll be able to be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Well, I thought I was already perfect in Christ, but I'm born again. You are. But could it be that you're still a baby? Most likely. You see, strongly belongs to mature. Those who exercise the senses, knowing. You see, you know it. It's like you know your gender. Amen? Anybody have doubt what gender you are? If the devil told you you're something else, you told that devil to get out. And it's not that you were made that way. Amen? Let's go back to our outline. I'm going to change it up here. Tribulation, letter A, there, number four. Like one tied with a rope, laying heavy on his back, placing letter B. These believers were at a place that normal Christians had never been through. How many of us have thought, why is this happening to me? And I used to, I used to scream that when I'd come home from work. Man, why is this happening? I'm working as hard as I can. I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm reading the Word. I'm praying. I'm trying to fast. I'm trying to give. I'm going to church. Come on. And I'd throw myself on the ground and have a little pity party. Why is this happening to me? Where's my wife? She'd look at me like, get up off that floor. And then I'd get mad. Lord, why is this happening to me? And she said, that didn't do no good either. You know? Yeah, so then you gotta put the rattle away and change the pampers. Come on now. You know, stop that. But if you're a newborn Christian, you just keep asking for more. Daddy holds you. We'll hold you. Get you through the day. Get you through the night. Uh, let's take a right hand turn. First Peter four twelve. How many? Give me one more minute. One more minute. Let me give me one more. Minute. Nobody's gonna give me one more minute. One, two, three. Okay, four minutes. I didn't ask for the five minutes. First Peter four twelve. Beloved, do not think strange concerning fire trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happening to you. 1 Peter 4.13 But rejoice to the extent that you are a partaker of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, that you also be glad and exceedingly joyful. Joy. The joy of the Lord gives you what while you're going through something? Strength. You have joy because why? You know where you're going if you were to go. You know who you are in Christ. You know that you've been sent to preach the gospel. You know that you're here for others. You know that you're not supposed to be offended. You know you're not supposed to walk by your emotions. You know you have the emotion, the love of God in you. But you know that that doesn't dictate who you are. That you serve a different kingdom. That you are what God says you are. See, there's no, God's not wavering on his promises. He knows. And we should know. So just walk in it every day. Put on Christ. Amen. You can do this. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, Who shall... Let's look at verse 4. 4, 7. But we have this treasure of earthly vessel that exceedingly in power may be of God and not ourselves. Verse 8, 2 Corinthians 4, 8 says, We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. There it is, crushed, being perplexed. We talked about that earlier. Uh, being tried, crushed, you're, you're under pressure. Uh, we are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always caring about the body of the dying the Lord Jesus, the life of Jesus may be manifested in your body. Amen? Amen. No longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. Right? To live for the Son of God, in the Son of God. Amen? Let's keep going here. Uh, 
That last thought there, number five, endure. Would you want to place up four, please? <clears throat> you look back at your head scripture there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, so that we ourselves glory are about you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. That word endure in the Greek means to put up with. Are you putting up with something right now? Have you, end, have you come to the end of your boat? Can you can't go on? Have you come that far yet? That means you've been going through some patience. And if anything, you've probably been in the Word more now. You've been praying the Holy Ghost more. I hope you have. So you're coming out stronger than you were before. You might not realize it right now, but the next time that pressure comes, you'll see it for what it is and not accept it. Because you caught you a thief. You caught you a liar. You caught you a deceiver. And the Bible says to take that and take no thought of that any longer. You capture that thought. Put it in prison. Don't let him out. Don't let him tempt you, entice you, say it's not going to be any better than what it used to be. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. All things are good with God. If it ain't good, it ain't God. Huh? Amen? Let's go through our confession. First, let me read you this. The scripture one more time, our headline scripture there, 2 Thessalonians. So that we ourselves glory in or about you in the churches of God for your patience or endurance, faith, which means trust or confidence, the persecution for the word's sake, the tribulation for pressure and troubles that you endure. The word endure means to resist, not giving up. Don't give up your faith. Don't give up. Your treasure. Don't give it up. My last confession there. Everybody read this with me, please. Ready? I confess that I have overcome the evil one. I am strong, stable, resilient, reliable, faithful, and committed to do whatever it takes to fulfill the calling God has in my life. Holy Spirit, I thank you for keeping me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up with me, please.